Recently, I added Bluetooth to my iPod Mini. It was actually pretty straightforward, so today I'll be demonstrating exactly how to do it. All you need is an iPod Mini, the Bluetooth module, some wire, a button, and a switch. You also have to switch out the original hard drive for a compact flash hard drive, or preferably one of these CF to SD card adapters, as they're thinner than the original drive and will give us much more space to work with. First, we start by disassembling the iPod. Take a box cutter blade and insert it gently under the top and bottom plastics to pry them off. This model is very easy to take apart. All the parts are big and nowhere near as fragile as some of the nanos and touches. After that, grab a flathead screwdriver bit and pry off the metal cover along the bottom. Now using a plastic pry tool, we need to gently disconnect the touch wheel flex. This is probably the most delicate part of the iPod mini, so take your time here. Go from side to side as I do in the video. After that's out, just remove the two screws up the top and now we can slide out the whole logic board assembly. After it's out, we can disconnect the old hard drive and battery and throw them straight in the bin as we're obviously going to be putting a new battery in this 18 year old iPod. Now we can insert our new SD cards into our adapter and install it into the iPod. When I do this mod, I also like to stick the adapter down to the logic board using some double sided tape as I put the Bluetooth module on top of it and I don't want everything wobbling around in there. Then plug in your new battery, connect it to iTunes and install the OS so we can test that everything's working fine before moving ahead with the mod. Now we're going to mount the button that'll be used for the Bluetooth pairing. I'll position it on the bottom of the iPod so it can be fairly hidden. It can be pushed simply by pressing on the bottom plastic like this. Use one of these 6x6x5 tactile push buttons. Then test with a multimeter which legs make contact when pressed. Then cut off the other two and shave down the bottom so it's flat. Then use some hard drying super glue to adhere it to the bottom of the board like this. Make sure you position it correctly so it can be activated by this metal piece which we'll cut down later. I'll also install an on off switch above the charging port. This one I harvested from a dead iPod Nano first gen. Use some hard drying super glue to stick that down as well. After that's done, we can move on to the battery. We need to add an extra positive and negative wire in order to power the Bluetooth board. I think the easiest way to go about this is to wire it off the battery BMS. First, we need to take the protective plastic off of the outside layer of the battery. Obviously, you need to be very careful when doing this as to not puncture the battery or disassemble the cell itself, as lithium ion batteries are dangerous and can explode if you do that. Mine had some liquid electric tape slash sealant over the connections, which I had to remove first just by scraping it off with the tweezers. Then solder a wire onto the positive and negative leads. The red wires are positive and the black wires are negative. You will need to use thin wires for this mod, otherwise there may not be enough space. The wire I used was from an old broken 30 pin cable. If you've never soldered before and don't know how to prepare a wire to be soldered, all you have to do is one, cut it to the appropriate length. Two, remove the plastic insulation at the end to expose the copper wire. Three, twist the exposed copper wire like this and four, add some solder to the end of each wire. I also like to dunk the wire in flux before I add the solder as it makes the solder spread more evenly. I do this same process for every wire that I solder here. I usually use a microscope when I'm soldering as I'm always working with small components, usually even smaller than this, although in this case it's a bit overkill. Although I would recommend getting one of these helping hands tools with a magnifying glass as it will make things much easier and they're only like 10 or 20 bucks. Before reinstalling it, we need to wrap the battery in captain tape like this to ensure nothing will short out on the logic board or the metal housing. Then we can plug the battery into the logic board and get it into position. I then around the positive lead and solder it to the bottom of the switch. You can use the multimeter to determine which leads on the switch are for on and off, but it's usually pretty self-explanatory just by looking at it. Now for the Bluetooth module. I start by removing the pair button as it won't be accessible from outside the case, and I already put another one at the bottom of the board. I remove it using my hot air rework station, although it can also be done using a soldering iron. If you flip the board upside down, we can see what all the connection points are for. Although we only need to wire up five of them. Power, ground, left audio, right audio, and audio ground. First, I'll attach the audio wires as they're not connected to anything else yet. Then I'll wire in the ground wire from the battery and an extra red wire to go to the switch. Before I install it in the iPod, I like to cut down the legs at the bottom using some wire cutters. Then I shave them down flush with the board using my file. I clean up all the shavings using some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud. Also double check that none of the connections are touching after shaving it. If they are, you can use some tweezers to scrape a gap in the middle as it's most likely just metal shavings. I put down a piece of captain tape and use some double sided adhesive to stick the Bluetooth board to. I like to position it on the left side like this. After that's stuck down, we can wire the positive wire to the other side of the switch to complete the circuit. Now let's wire up the headphone jack. Here's a picture of the different points we need to solder to. This mod won't disable the headphone jack or anything like that. We can still use it as normal when we aren't using Bluetooth. Definitely make sure you're using different colored wires when doing projects like this, as it could get really confusing otherwise. After that's done, I like to use some super glue to fix the wires down to the back of the battery. This won't put as much strain on the connections when we slide the logic board assembly back into the housing as it does become a tight fit and it's possible they could be ripped off. Now we just have to run another two short wires to the pair button. At this stage we can test all the functionality of the iPod to see if we were successful or not before reinstalling it into the housing. If you didn't know, the button assembly slides out of the housing just like this if you ever need to test the iPod outside of the housing. Hopefully all went well and it actually worked. At this stage you may think we're done and it's time to reassemble it, although there's still one problem. 
Bluetooth can't pass through aluminium, which is what the iPod mini is made out of. So we'll have to plug an additional antenna into the port on the Bluetooth board and run it under either the top or bottom plastic. We can get these antennas off of eBay or AliExpress. In the TikTok, I'd pulled one from an old Nintendo DSi which fit perfectly. I just had to cut it down a bit. I installed it under the top plastic. I had to cut it to fit and I also had to cut the metal bracket up the top. For the iPod in the video, I tried making my own antenna out of a piece of copper. It did work, although the range wasn't all that good. If I made it again, I'd make it smaller as to not touch the metal housing. Although I still think the DSi antenna worked better here. If the audio cuts out or the range isn't that good, it means the antenna isn't strong enough. You can always keep trying different antennas till you find a good one that works well. After that's done, we can slot the whole assembly back into the housing, plug in the buttons and install the two screws. We can adhere the top plastic back as normal using some double sided tape. Before we reinstall the metal bracket at the bottom, we need to cut it down a bit to fit the pair button and power switch. I snip these two pieces off using wire cutters and I use my cutting tool to take this part out. It then fits back in like normal. As you can see, cutting off those two supports gave us enough flex for the button to be pushed. Before I put the bottom plastic back in, I like to shave down all the protrusions on the back. Then I cut a small hole for the on off switch. After that, I put some double sided tape on the bottom and reattach it. And that's it. Now the iPod's done and it's ready to be used. Just take out your Bluetooth headphones or speakers, put it in pair mode, click the button and it'll connect. It actually works really well. Overall, this mod is pretty straightforward and allows us to use our modern wireless headphones with this old but still love technology. Although it does take quite a while to do. I think I'm going to convert the rest of my minis like this and list them for sale on my website. Links in the description. I'll also list a Bluetooth chip available for sale as well if you'd like to give it a go yourself. Or if you'd prefer, you can send me your iPod mini and I can install it for you. I have more details about that in the description too. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe to see me put Bluetooth in an iPod classic. Also follow me on TikTok. I'm uploading much more frequently there. See you next time.